Like I said earlier, when we look at where men are going to when they leave this country to find right. wives, they're not going to places with curvy women. Mm, mm-hmm. If men were going to South Africa, I'd be like, you know what? You got it. Mm-hmm. Men are going to Thailand. Yeah, tiny. Petite women. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to... So you're a very rational person. I try to be. Right? (laughs) Do you feel like your brethren, your fellow counterparts, would think the same way? And to kind of give context to the question, we see a lot on podcasts or even in the comments of some videos that women over 25 who are still single, they're kind of like the leftover women. Something has to be wrong with them. And so... They're already coming in with this stigma of what a woman is or is not based on her age. So going back to the question about women who are 28 plus, do you think that is something that is a legitimate concern that we should have, that we have a negative perspective? Mm -hmm. And I'll explain why. Um, The fertility thing aside, I think the main concern, and I'm speaking as somebody who primarily, shoot, other than my daughter's mom, every woman I've dated was older than me. What tends to happen with older women is they tend to be stuck in their ways. They tend to not be as malleable. They tend to not be as agreeable. Because it's one thing for you to be younger than me and think, you know, by default that I ain't shit. It's a completely different thing for you to be older and wiser than me (laughs) and think I ain't shit. And I think in a lot of men's experiences, after women cross a certain age threshold, they're not as receptive to critique. They're not as willing to get on your program. She has her career. She's not about to follow you with yours. Right. So when men are thinking from a long term standpoint, um, do I want somebody who is going to be my help me or do I want somebody who's going to be like my older sister where we're going to clash? You know, so I think from that perspective, I think if you're under 35, you're still good. But you just have to do a little bit more to prove to men that, like, you're not this uh, beyond reproach. You can't tell me shit. You know, you're a little boy ass woman. Mm-hmm. Because our default assumption is going to be that. And I think there's some default assumptions, like I talked about earlier, that women have of men yeah. that, you know, um, we as men need to cater to. Right. Um, so similarly, yeah, most men are going to be like, OK, what's what's going on? <laughs> let's go nobody nobody tried it you know what I'm saying yeah. what's, what's going on mm-hmm. so in, in understanding men's perspective and, and, and appreciating men's perspective um, not necessarily you have to prove yourself but you have to be mindful of it let's go have questions you you look good and you did. what's going on what's, mm-hmm. what's happening right um, and I know women like that where honestly it's just that she doesn't want it that's the only reason it hasn't happened. I know other women, and I think this is the majority, is they want to want it. But they don't really, really want it. They want to want it. They want the aesthetic. They want the benefits. But they don't want any of the responsibility that comes along with monogamy or long-term relationship. And that's the only reason. And to your video, she's a runner. She's a trash <laughs> Yeah. You know, so it comes with self-awareness and being able to um, articulate it to yourself and to to the guy because he de- he deserves to know. It's a fair. It's a fair. If you've been outside, it's fair. To, why you look good and you thirty five and nobody like what's going on? Yeah, yeah. It's like wanting the wedding but not wanting the marriage, Come on, as now. they say. I think it's so much more layered than that, though. And it's like, I understand that. I think those Let's are valid things that Let's happen. Let's peel them back. Let's go. You talked about my video. And so, I mean, I think abandonment issues are a very valid thing, right? And I think what is happening with 
this generation of women, millennials, maybe even a generation before that, is that we're seeing the the full after effects of having a broken family dynamic. And so that's different than some of the things that we compare to in the past with our grandparents and things like that. And so one of the characteristics of women who have abandonment issues is that they subconsciously seek men who are emotionally unavailable. So going back to what you were saying about wanting the six figure guy who's the asshole versus the nice guy and you kind of overlook him, I think a lot of that is rooted in what we're seeing as well. So it can't just be discounted as, you know, she doesn't really want it. Maybe she does, but she needs to uncover the reason why she's moving in that way. I agree, I agree completely. From the perspective of the guy, mm -hmm. especially the guy who like most of us isn't, you know, a psychology nerd. They're going to stop it. She doesn't really want it. Right. Okay. Especially if I have if I have an alternative woman that does want it and is willing to because <clears throat> my biggest thing has always been it's a, it's 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 value, right? Mm -hmm. Because black women at scale understand who they need to become to get a job at Google. They understand who they need to become to get into corporate America, get into HR, get into entrepreneurship, whatever the case may be. And they're willing to contort and conform themselves to the requirements of the industry that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a man, it seems to be the case that, no, that industry should conform to me. The, the man should conform to me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of dudes are saying, like, yo, I've done the work. I ain't conforming to shit. Because at the end of the day, why would I conform to you when if somebody pulls out a gun, I'm supposed to jump in front of it for you? Mm -hmm. So if you're not willing to listen to me, I can't protect you. And it seems to be the case that women who are over a certain threshold are less willing to listen. So for a man who's done all the things to get all the sixes, um, it doesn't look like a good proposition which so let's use the job analogy. Um, you know, it's part of the reason why some companies now are moving away from hiring tenure people and they're going towards like college students because they're more malleable. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to. For instance, when I worked in banking, the company I was working for started an initiative to actually train people on how to become mortgage loan officers. And one of the uh, instructors told us that. Um, some of the more seasoned uh, people in this industry, people who were loan officers in 2008, they're jaded. Yeah. And they have a lot of baked in bad habits that they're unwilling to part with because they worked for them at some point. Mm. But you guys are a fresh, brand new slate and we can actually shape you the way we want you to go. Mm -hmm. Men see women the exact same way. Mm. So if you yeah. see value in men and understanding men, uh, you must be willing to compete in, you know, so you can still get a job as a loan officer being old, but you have to show that you're not jaded. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can only do that if you see value in that job. Okay. Amen. So what are some of the ways that a woman can and should compete for a man? <sighs> I think number one, you have to identify the type of man you want. And you have to identify why you want him, right? And it, it, it some of it can be superficial, sure. Mm -hmm. It can't all be superficial because the superficial shit won't last. Right. Same with men, right? Like she's bad, but like as somebody who's dated bad women, after a while, she just looks normal to you. Mm -hmm. Like she, yeah, I remember like one of my boys, he, um, he's got a Mercedes GT. The nerds in, in, who are watching, they know that car. Man. That shit is fire. <laughs> yeah. And he was telling me, he was like, man, the last time I remember that I had this car was when my homeboy asked me to drive it around the block. And I was like, oh, shit, that's, that's what I'm pulling up here? Mm -hmm. But he's been driving it so long, he forgets. So, like, you know, to take it deeper, it's called the hedonic treadmill, hedonic adaptation. We are going to get used to how you look. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the woman, you're going to get used to his beardedness and the whole nine. So are you prioritizing the things that are going to last past that phase of being infatuated with his aesthetic? Um, so, yeah. So once you do that and once you consolidate your list, your long ass mm -hmm. list. <laughs> consolidate the list, Consolidate ladies. your list, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
then number one, I think you will start um, opportunities that you might have entertained before might not you might not identify them anymore. And opportunities that you might have overlooked before, you might now be able to identify them. There are a lot of women, mm-hmm. they, they, a good man could be standing right in front of them, they wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. They don't even see him because he's not at least my height or taller, mm-hmm. right? Uh, or he's not wearing whatever the fuck, right? Um, so, so I think after that, it's just a matter of continuing to do the work and just priorities, man. That's it. That's, that's, that's really it. Because to your point... You have a Steve. She has a Steve. Mm-hmm. And maybe Steve is for you. Maybe he's not. But there's some other Steves that you've been overlooking as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a Steve you ran into at a coffee shop, but you were looking at him like, this nigga short. Or this nigga, yeah, you know, this and that. And you just blacked your blessing. Okay. Get that 100%. You don't think men do that too, though? And I understand that you guys absolutely. like physical no, absolutely. appearance. Absolutely. But that's the same thing if a woman is too overweight or if she isn't as curvy as you like. She could be a woman of value in so many other ways. And so I think it's something that we both struggle with. I would say women more so than men only because, like I said earlier, when we look at where men are going to when they leave this country to find right. wives, they're not going to places with curvy women. Mm, mm-hmm. If men were going to South Africa, I'd be like, you know what? You got it. Mm-hmm. Men are going to Thailand. Yeah, tiny. The tea to it. <laughs> men are going to Taiwan and shit like that. Like, yeah. we have to. And, and, you know, that goes back to gaining an understanding of men. In my gaining an understanding of women, I've realized over the years what women say they want and what they actually want are necessarily the same thing. Mm-hmm. For men... Who a man would more quickly sleep with versus who he's going to marry? Not the same thing. Right. Not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we're failing at as a community is I think our women are prioritizing being chosen first instead of being chosen last. Mm -hmm. That sounds counterintuitive as a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. But like you want to be chosen last, not Mm -hmm. first. Like there was a woman, I think on TikTok, she... Uh, she made a video talking about why do men always settle down with like plain jeans? Like the gas, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Talk to men, they'll tell you. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you. I'm looking for a grandmother to my future grandchildren. Yeah. Not the baddest bitch on the block. Yeah. I've had the baddest bitch on the block. I know how that, t- I know what that comes with. Mm-hmm. I don't want that. That's cool to fish. She make my dick hard, but that, that's not what I want. So again, like, are you playing basketball or are you playing handball? 